Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, glad you could be here alongside Jan is with me Thanks today. Hey, Jan. Hey, everybody. So from what I understand, you've got some good money-saving tips that you would like to share. Anytime we can help someone save a little money here, there, or anywhere, it's always worth it. So I oh, do yeah. have a couple. I do believe strongly in us, anyone, creating a name it and claim it fund. It is so important to emphasize the reason why you're saving for something. For example, it could be as simple as $100 to put away just for gas, for example. So gasoline, like you could you could put it inside a piggy bank, you could put it inside an envelope or a real bank. It does not make a difference. Right. Yeah. All right. I want to mention, Steve, that next Monday that I have a show coming out, a little bit of self-advertisement. I have a show next Monday coming out for those wanting to save $500 a month. That will be at 2 p.m. on Monday, September 2nd. And hopefully you guys can be there. Mm -hmm. And next, this is important, Steve, to avoid getting into the rabbit hole of debt, especially for lower income people. For example, buy everything you can that you need to get with cash. When I say cash, I don't necessarily mean like a green dollar bill. I mean using your debit card, okay? Not a credit card. And if you can't pay for it on the debit card, then that means probably you can't afford it and you shouldn't buy it. So if you can't afford right. it, don't buy it. And then uh, next, make purchases with great intention, particularly Again, if you're living on a low income, for example, ask yourself, is this purchase a want or a need? Or could I delay getting that mani-pedi for a few more weeks or maybe just yeah. skip it on that haircut and just trimming, you know, the edges of your hair, whatever, whatever it is, and find those little, little bits of extracted funding from not doing those things because you could wait or delay it and put that money away. You'd be shocked and amazed how it could really accumulate. It's amazing. Steve, yeah. I know you have something to mention that people oftentimes overlook, and it's rather, you know, rather convenient, right? Well, the one that I want to throw in has to do with um, shopping at a wholesale club like Costco, Sam's, BJ's, you know, that that type of a wholesale club. You have to, I'm, I myself, I do shop at them. And um, primarily the reason why I have a membership, not only some of the deals that I can get inside the store versus what I would pay, you know, in a grocery store. Yes, I know I have to buy a larger quantity, but I always go after things that I know that I'll use and need and will get used up. It won't, you know, go bad. But really, though, my biggest reason of going to the wholesale club is for gasoline. Why? Well, why should I pay three thirty-five a gallon out here when I can go to my wholesale club right across? And save thirty-eight cents a gallon on gas and get it for two ninety-seven. Good point. So, if you're putting in a whole tank of gas, that saves money. Now, I do have a BJ's membership, and my BJ's membership, right off the top, the one that I have, whatever the gas is at the pump, I get an additional five cents off. Automatic. That's good. So if Right. So if gas down there at last time I checked was two ninety nine, take away five, I would get a gallon of gas for two ninety four. Which in today's times, two ninety four is a steal compared Absolutely. to everywhere else. Absolutely. So it is important to stop and think about does it pay to go to the wholesale club and shop versus going to a regular grocery store? Um I do know that do you necessarily have to have a decent sized family in order to have a membership? No, you don't. Um, but it never hurts to stock up 
and have a few extra things on hand, that'll save you some money down the road. Like paper goods, that's always something that we're always going to need. Uh, that'll always save you money down the road. Um, you can usually get a good, pretty good buy on like meat. Sometimes you get a pretty good deal. I know I can get a pretty good deal at Sam's Club on 88% ground beef for like $4 a pound. I'm not going to find that anywhere else. I'm not. Although you got to buy a little bit of a big pack, you got to spend about $15, $18. But if you wrap it up, make hamburgers out of it, use it for spaghetti sauces or shepherd's pie or whatever type of dish that you're going to make, you know, it, it'll get used. So to me, if you're trying to save money, I think on not everything, but a lot of things, a wholesale club is not a bad idea. No, I, I totally agree with you on that, Steve. I, I really uh, appreciate that you, you know, explain in depth on that. That's, that's important. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing to take advantage of. You know, Steve, I just want to mention another uh, money keeping tip. A lot of people are on the fence about creating a budget. And in my honest, I believe that could be a mistake because your budget is kind of like your financial roadmap and keeping track of your expenses is just really, really important. Sometimes people just don't know, and that's the biggest mistake that they can make. And the other thing to mention in reference to budgeting, Steve, is that even though a person's income may be relatively similar month in and month out, that doesn't mean their expenses every single month are the exact same. Example, no. an expense that I may have like at Christmas time in December may be a completely different list of expenses than like in August, for example. It would be. It would be. Yeah. So that's really mm -hmm. important to, you know, keep abreast of that stuff. Well, you know, keep in mind too, August, people are always prone to use their air conditioner more. And in the winter time, you're prone to use your heater more. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, it, it is going to vary. One, one may be a little higher than the other, could be a little lower. I mean, it does fluctuate, you know, you, right. you really don't. So, yeah, you make a good point there. Um, so, yes, people, you really have to, you know, keep an eye on your expenses. Be careful when you go shopping versus a want versus a need. And I do highly agree that if you're going to pay for something, yeah, go with either the debit method or cash don't use your credit card by all means stay away from that is because especially a low income if you put yourself into debt then you're in debt then you have a very very difficult time paying back you know the amount that you owe and then you're faced with interest charges as well so and these days Interest on a credit card on average is about 14, maybe 15 percent. That's on an average. Wow. Could be a little higher. And that's for somebody with decent credit, mind you. So always, if you can do it, cash, debit, stay away from the credit. Don't use it. Excellent point, Steve. And just imagine something else in addition to that. The monies that you are not tying up repaying a credit card debt, for example, can be money that goes into savings. And that savings you could consider putting into a higher yield interest bearing account. You so you, you see where all of it, you know, can work out. So right. And I think when you say a high yield account like that, I think you're talking, I believe you it's of the equivalent of some over here it's called a money market account. Right. Look into that. Yes. Yes. Um, I do know that a money market account does pay a little bit higher in dividends. Not right. not drastically, but it, you know, I think like like um, a regular checking account, I think is like maybe 0.05 percent or 0.1 or whatever it is. Whereas um, 
a money market would be like 0. 0.43, 0. 0.4. It's a little bit higher. You're, 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 it you're does hit up, however, if you keep it there. And some people are afraid of touching that they won't have access to that. Uh, type of an account. Not really. I believe a person may have like an opportunity to make like four to six transactions uh, in a certain period of time. You have to ask, you have to ask your financial institution, you know, that you're far, Well, I've had, I've had money market accounts checking and then all that. I've had mm -hmm. it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, from what I remember, I, well, well, me on av me myself on average, um, I, I usually don't go above. How many transactions do I? I usually do a transaction a week, so that's about four, maybe five at the most, depending on how many weeks are in a month. So, so if it is six transactions, this is you know, in the case of a money market. It would it would work for me because I'm staying below. I think you are right. I think you're only allowed so many transactions with the money market. Right. I think I think you are right. I'd have to, I'd have to. Let's double. talk about it. You sparked something in my mind. Let's talk about people that use their ATM way too often, especially for tiny amounts of money. Especially if it's out of their network of their bank's network. Mm hmm. The fees, oh my goodness, Steve, can you imagine? Some of the ATM fees out there are like, O-M-G. You know, I wanted to bring that up. I don't know. Um, I'm not sponsoring them, but I'll gladly bring them up. If anybody that is a subscriber and you are a member of Navy Federal Credit Union, I'm just putting this out there. Um Earlier this year, I signed up for a certain type of checking. And what it allows me to do is if I go to an ATM that charges me a fee, Navy Federal will reimburse it back to me. So if I go to an ATM and it costs me a $3 ATM fee to get my money, ATM, uh, Navy Federal will flip that money and give it back to me. So when I was told that, and I very rarely ever go to a, an ATM where you got to charge me a fee. But now that I know that, if ever in the event, because you never know, something out of the blue could happen. Um, I know that if I go to an ATM that charges me a fee, Navy Federal will take that amount and return it back to me. So, and I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what the checking name is. Let me see. Maybe I might be able to get it from here to share it again that's if anybody has a navy federal account um and it may be even at an at other credit unions i don't know okay here it is um what it's called on my end is it's called e-checking e-checking and um yeah what it's showing here you know when when, when they told me that you'll get your money back i said i said well put sign me up and I think if I still wanted to do it, which I don't write them anymore, if I wanted to do it, I, I, I have the ability to get, you know, checks at no cost or something, or, or I have unlimited checks. Anyway, the, at the time, the deal sounded too good to be true. And I think I had also I was given unlimited amount of ATM transactions. I, I don't remember exactly the details, but I would say look into it. But I do know that if you're looking for um, ATM usage, charging you a fee, you'll get the money back from maybe federal. These are the little ways where savings do happen. Like you just mentioned a number of situations there. So, that's right. So it's amazing. And, and sit down at your, you know, the bank that you work with, you know, if you have, you know, the real like brick and mortar, you know, bank, or unless you could uh, convey the question, you know, uh, electronically, that's totally fine as well. But ask questions. I think people are afraid to ask questions, which is ridiculous because knowledge is power. And it especially is. when it comes to your money. I mean, you know, everybody's got, you know, everybody has to look out.
Everybody absolutely has to look out. Steve, thank you so much for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this was a pretty good subject. I mean, I probably went on a little much about the... No, not at all, no. But but I would definitely look into it. Any, you know, any military, Navy, federal, go and ask, if you don't have it, go and ask about e-checking. Um, it's very good. In fact, you may even be able to look it up on their website. It may, it may go into detail and you can just read about it. Absolutely. Well, everybody, glad you could be here, Jan. Um, Thank you. you know, always be on the lookout for us or myself. And, um, you know, I just hope all of you have a great, you know, whatever time of day it is. And, you know, we'll see you back here um, next time. So, but if you guys would really be kind enough to do me one big favor, this would be so great. All right, everybody. Hope all of you have a great day, whatever time of day, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye. Bye-bye.